I'm going to show you several different ways that you could mount your servos if you're using foam like this on your model railroad. So let's go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance to pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And about a year ago, I showed you how I mounted my servos on two inches of foam. I had two layers of one inch foam and I mounted my servo right here. I put them on a piece of furring strip and mounted it on a servo mount that I received from Iowa Scaled Engineering that looks like this. These can be 3D printed. The plans are on Thingiverse. I took a furring strip and cut 60 millimeter long pieces for all my turnouts. I cut holes similar to this where the furring strip would fit in. As you can see right here, this is what the finished product looks like. Now what I have right here is cork underlayment that I cut at the profile of this Y and I have the, the whisker coming right up through the center. I haven't cut it off yet. You could mount it off to the side, which I prefer to mount it off to the side. You could pull this whole thing off and that's what it looks like right there. Let me show you my current project where I have a crossover. This is what I'm doing on my current layout on my module. And I did the same thing, but I, I mounted them a little bit different. I have one on each turnout on either end of the crossover. But as you can see, nothing hangs on the bottom. So this will fit right on the plywood. All I have to do is drill holes for the wires. I cut a slot near the throw arm and mounted everything right underneath with the arm of the servo pointing up. So it is just barely under the cork right there. On my old version that I used with a two inch, I have the servo mounted underneath with the actuating arm pointing down and the whisker pointing up, similar to what you would find on a tortoise switch machine. Now on the newer version, I have it the opposite way. The whisker isn't mounted on here as such and the actuating arm is pointing up. Here's the cutout for the crossover. I don't have the holes cut for the wires for the servo yet. The way I mounted these, I gave myself enough room to be able to slide the rail joiners back. And then once I put the crossover back in place, I'll put the rail joiners back on either side to hold it into place. On this side right here, you'll see I, I dug a channel all the way through because my original thought was to use a linear actuator and mount them over here on each side. Unfortunately, the linear actuators that I purchased did not work, so I scrapped that idea. On this turnout right here, the piece that I cut out wasn't wide enough to mount that furring strip and servo mount underneath here, so I mounted it directly underneath the layout. And there's what it looks like underneath the layout. It's mounted similar to how the tortoise is. And I have the, the actuating arm pointing down and the wire connected to the actuating arm going up. And it's going on the side of the turnout, not in the center between the tracks. It's going on the side because you could leave it a little bit longer just in case you have to pull the thing out and reposition it. After doing maintenance on it, you won't have to have it so short that you it's hard to find. The servo mounts can be 3D printed. I'll have a link to Thingiverse in the description. I took a furring strip or slat, which is a quarter inch by one and a half inch by 36 inches and can be purchased at Home Depot and cut them into 60 millimeter lengths, which is just a little bit longer than the servo mount. 
This is the arrangement that I used for the two inch foam and the under layout mount without the slat. This is the arrangement that I used for under the crossover. Of course, this is upside down from how it is mounted. I'll show how I hook up the wire later on. The servos I'm using, I purchased from Waveshare and they have the metal gears. They cost a little bit more, but they are more reliable than the plastic gear servos. I got the idea of the removable turnouts from an old model railroader that built the O-scale layout at the Hagerstown Roundhouse Museum that I visited a couple of years ago. To position the servo, I first worked from the top and determined where the arm for the servo would be and poked a hole straight down with a small rat tail file. From then I turned it over and placed the slat adjacent to the hole that I just poked through the foam. I cut around the slat with an X-Acto blade and made sure it was deep enough following with my knife to get the desired length and shape of the slat. I fitted the servo into place and then expanded the slot where the actuating arm would be ensuring there was sufficient clearance for its movement to turn the turnout. Now comes the hard part of determining how to cut and shape the wire to actuate the turnout. The shape of the wire as you see right here is what the final product looks like but I had to shorten it a little bit to make it fit correctly in the narrow slot that I had for the turnout. Although the wires are bent in a similar fashion for each end of the crossover, they are different lengths. So as you see in the next few clips, the PWM settings will be different for each end of the turnout. I ran the turnout back and forth a few times on each end and recorded the settings at each end. This way, once I have it hooked up to the Arduino, I have a good starting point to determine where I need to set my sketch for each end of the turnout. This has to be done on each turnout individually since the placement of the servo and the length of the wire may be different on each one. So this is one thing that you have to keep in mind whenever you're doing servos, even though they may appear to be the same, you'll have to test each one of them individually and record the settings for that particular servo. The hardest part of this project was the wire. Finding the right length and the right bends for this. But even harder was getting it down into the slots of the servo actuator arm. I will have to put a dab of silicone on the end of the wire on the actuator arm to keep it in place. I dare not try to bend it around the actuator arm because I may damage the arm itself. These are some of the turnouts that I have to look forward to working on next that are a little bit further down the line on the module. All these servos will be actuated with Arduino and that will be discussed in a later video. So until the next time, we'll see ya.